As we abide in Christ, we're going to see what comes as a result of it. I'm going to tell you the story of a, a, a Christian man giving a lecture. His name was Dr. Harry Ironside. He was speaking before an assembly one day. And as he's speaking, he notices a man in the front writing something on a card. As he continued to give the lecture, he continued writing. And then finally, at the end, this man, Arthur Lewis, was an agnostic lecturer, someone who didn't believe in a God. And he walked up to Dr. Ironside and he gave him, he gave him a card and proposed the following challenge, a debate on the subject agnosticism versus Christianity. Dr. Ironside read the, the, the card there in front of everyone and he said, I accept your challenge under these conditions. First, you've got to promise to bring with you to the platform one man who was once an outcast and a slave to sinful habits, but who heard you or some other infidel lecture on agnosticism. And he was so helped to the point that he cast away his sins, became a new man, and is today a respected member of society, all because of unbelief. He said, uh, and, and second, you got to bring one woman who was once lost to all purity and goodness, but who can now testify that because of agnosticism, because that came to her rescue while deep in sin, implanted in her pure, pure, or poor heart a hatred of impurity, a love of holiness, it caused her to become chaste and upright all through a disbelief in the Bible. He said, just one. Bring one man in that case. Bring one woman in that case. And if you will agree, I promise to be there with 100 such men and 100 such women who were once just lost souls and who heard the gospel of the grace of God and have found new life in joy all because of Jesus Christ. Right. Will you accept my terms? To which Mr. Lewis walked away in silence. You see, the Christian life is primarily about a relationship with God that changes our lives. In this day in which we live, there's an abundance of agnostic reasoning. A focus, watch this, on self-help. And yet we've got to recognize this morning that God is the reason you're here today. That I'm here today. He's the one who will transform us into the image of His Son. And may I break something down for you very clearly. The primary purpose for your life, hear me this morning, is not to learn more about yourself. It's not to figure out what makes you tick and what makes you happy. I'll go a step further. The primary purpose in our lives this morning is not to know more about somebody else around you. We are here to know God and to become like him. That's the primary purpose in our life. And, and the world will tell you, but that's not going to make you happy. Seek what makes you happy. And yet Jesus is the author and the source of joy. And the more we get to know him, we can abide in his pleasure. We've looked at that in, in previous weeks. As we learn more about him, our lives begin to change. We experience spiritual renewal. Spiritual renewal. One lady once said, I, I finally got in touch with my inner self. And she's just as confused as I am. <laughs> getting to know myself, getting to know yourself and others will not bring about a life change. The key to a renewed life is getting to know our maker. Yeah. Our creator. Yeah. Paul said it this way in Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. Hey, what's he saying? My whole life is in Christ. I can experience real fellowship with God. And when I do that, watch this. When I do that, every other relationship in life will then be renewed as well. So we've examined thus far what it means to abide in Christ, to remain and to settle down. A continuing relationship of growth. And so we're going to round the corner this morning. And over the next several weeks, we're going to see specifically of what Christ desires to do in and through our lives now that we're abiding in him. We're in our text in Philippians chapter 2. Look down at verse number 12. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, 
Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Here it is. Watch. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Experiencing the renewal of Christ. What we're going to look at this morning for a few moments as we do. Let's bow for prayer. Don't just listen to me pray. I encourage you to pray and ask the Lord to give you what you need this morning. His word is powerful and can do such a thing. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you asking for a renewal. We come to you asking you to, to speak on our behalf. Well, Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts. May we respond to you and listen and put all other distractions and focuses aside and in turn, Look directly in what you have for us in our lives this morning. You want us to have that renewal. There are so many here, myself included, who are tired, weak, heavy laden. And you said, come unto me in that condition so you can give us rest. That rest comes in your truth. Help us to see it this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If we're looking this morning at experiencing the renewal of Christ, we want us to see, first of all, the desire for renewal. A desire for renewal. What do you say this morning? What I mean by that is spiritual renewal does not come naturally to us. I don't know about you, but what comes natural to me is fighting my flesh. Fighting against those things that I know are displeasing to God. So where will this desire for renewal come from if it's not coming from me? First of all, the desire for renewal, I want us to understand, is that he creates a will to know him. God places within each of his children a desire to know him. Notice verse 13 again. For it is God which worketh in you both to will. God gives you a will inside of you to know him. If I have a desire to know God, it's because of his work in me. If I know Christ somewhere within me, God has placed a desire to know him. Romans 7, 18 says this. Listen to what Paul said. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. But watch what he says. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. He says, in me, there's no good thing. Oh, don't get me wrong. I got a desire to do good. But it's really hard to follow up on that. It's really hard to follow through on that. My flesh hinders me from performing that. And spiritual renewal is the work of God from the inside. It begins with God. It continues as we yield to him. He gives us the will to know him. But here's the thing. We've got to follow that will with a personal response. Jeremiah 31 3 tells us this the Lord hath appeared of old unto me saying yea I have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness watch have I drawn thee when we were saved God says I've called you unto myself I gave you a desire to know me and so he's drawing us but he leaves us the choice to respond I like the way a French proverb put it a good meal ought to begin with hunger. Think about that for a moment. Have you noticed how everything tastes good when your stomach's empty? How many of you have learned the hard way? It's a bad idea to go grocery shopping before you eat. Yeah, that cart fills up a lot quicker. And yet, you know what else is true? It's amazing that it's hard to really enjoy some food when you're already full. No matter how good it is. Now, some of us, we can find a way, right? I mean, if we're full and that's really good, we can still find a way. But, but as Christians, the truth of the matter is this. Some of you may be sitting here this morning and saying, wait a minute, I don't really have that much of a desire to know God. I know that I'm saved, but you said we all have a desire. I haven't seen that in a while. And I'd like to submit to you this morning that very possibly could be because we're so full of ourselves. The more full of ourselves we are, the less we have a desire for him. Oh, wow. 
If my desire for him is not that strong, it's not because he didn't give it. Because it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He's drawn us with an everlasting love. And so if we don't sense that, and if we don't have that desire, it very well could be because we're so filled with other things. Right. It could also be because we're not a child of God in the first place. I'm not here to cause you to doubt your salvation, but that's the first place we want to look. But if we know we've trusted Jesus as our Savior and yet we don't have a desire for Him, it's not His fault. You know, I wasn't going to say this, not here in our notes, but I want to kind of go off a little bit on that on this side. Of, I've been caught up with a verse over the last few days in 2 Timothy 2, verse 21, where God says that He's created us as a vessel of honor. Meat for the master's use. Here we go. Again, this has not much to do with what we're talking about this morning, but we're talking about emptying ourselves and being filled with him. Sometimes I struggle. Lord, what are you? have you created me to do? And we look at our lives as a utensil, as a tool. We're a tool in God's hands and he's shaping us to perform something specific. And yet God has never called us to be a utensil. God has called us to be a vessel. What's the difference? A vessel just holds stuff. <laughs> it just contains something. And God said, if you can be a vessel for me, if you can have a life that's empty of you and filled with me, I can use you. Yeah. I, sometimes I get discouraged. I, I'm, not, I'm not the way, everything's not perfect in my life. And God said, I, I'm not looking for everything to be perfect in your life. I don't have all my I's dotted and my T's crossed. I'm missing this. I'm missing that. God can't use me. And yet God says, I'm not looking for someone as a utensil. I'm just looking for an empty vessel. One who's then filled with me. God can use you and wants to use you. And he draws you with a spiritual renewal and a, and a desire for him and his word. So he creates a will to know him and then he leads us. To know him. It says it's God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He gives us a desire and then he accomplishes that in our lives. Galatians 5. We looked at it already this morning, our memory verse. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not forbid the lust of the flesh. Why? The flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one or the other, so you cannot do the things that you would. So the Holy Spirit is there to lead us, but we have to yield to him. He gives us that desire to know him and to seek him. And then he leads us in that way. I wish I told someone this yesterday. I wish God almost would put up a, a, a collar around us and lead us. I mean, sometimes I'm so stubborn and want to do my own thing. I wish God, I want to do right. Just make me. But we have to choose. Will I follow God or will I let my flesh control me? Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. We are the children of God. We can follow His will. His Spirit gives us the will to do right, to become like Christ, to become spiritually mature. The flesh says, go back to the old life. Go back to old friends. Go back to the old way. Go back to other habits. God says, I've got a will for you. I'm leading you in that. We can recognize a Christian often by their lifestyle. You can see if we're following the leadership of the Spirit. Hear me this morning. God did not save you. God did not save me so that I could go back to my sinful habits. He saved us so we could follow the Spirit's leading in our everyday lives. Do you have that desire? He's created it. And then he puts a will within it. Those who are his children have a hunger and desire to know him deeply. He said this to his disciples as he spoke on the, on the mount. He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Watch this. Why? For they shall be filled. What's he saying? If you really got a desire to know me and you really seek me, you'll be filled. 
I'm not going to create a desire that I won't then satisfy. I'm not going to lead you uh, with a carrot on a stick, hoping you're eventually going to get to what you want. No, no, no. I'm going to create that desire. I'm going to lead you. And when you seek it, you're going to find it. One preacher put it this way. I mentioned this yesterday. It's as if God puts a hole in the heart of every man that only Jesus can fill. And here we are in life trying to fulfill and satisfy our lives by putting this in and putting this in and it goes in and comes right back out. It's a hole that nothing else can fill. It's a hole, watch this, family can't fill. It's a hole that a career and going high up that ladder just still doesn't seem to fulfill. It's a, it's a hole that fame can't fulfill. It's a hole that money can't fill. But it is a hole that Jesus can. And that's the only hope and the only peace and the only fulfillment our souls will find. I think about the Samaritan woman in John 4. The woman at the well, been married several times, was at that point living in a relationship even outside of marriage. And Jesus says, I've got something for it. You're obviously searching. You're obviously trying to fill a hole in your life and you're not finding it. I've got something that'll fill you. I've got water that'll make you never thirst again. You've been trying to find satisfaction in other ways, but you've never known God. What did he say in John 4, 14? Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Is that the kind of restoration you're seeking? Wouldn't you like to have a renewal in your heart that's just springing up? Not something that's just emptied out, but something that's springing up. God said, I I've given you the desire for renewal. That leads us to second of all, seeking for renewal. Psalm 105 verse 4 says, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face forevermore. If I have a God-given desire for renewal, I'm going to seek that renewal through the Holy Spirit. I love Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4 talks about, uh, talking about the, the children of Israel. And if you get away from the Lord, and if you're seeking other things and other gods and, and all these other things for your life, and you wander far from Him, you get away from Him, even though He's brought you out, even though he's got so much for you, even though you're his chosen people, if you get away from him, Deuteronomy 4.29 says, but if from thence, where? From a life away from God, if from right there, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek with him with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Hear me this morning. It doesn't matter what stage in life you're at right now. You say, Pastor, I'm so far away from the Lord. I haven't thought about him since I was here last Sunday morning. Uh, I, I, I haven't been, in, I, I haven't opened my Bible and I haven't spoken with him in prayer, close, intimate prayer in months. This isn't really for me. God says, wherever you are, from thence, fill in that blank. If from thence thou shalt seek the Lord, thou shalt find him. God says it's not a hide and seek game with me. You seek me, you're going to find me. I've given you a desire for that renewal. Now seek it. Seek him with determination. Spiritual growth requires diligent study, determination. The Christian life's not a party. Nothing but fun and games. And sometimes we're apathetic toward the Lord. Passionate about seeking other things. Think about something you're passionate about this morning. I'm not saying it's a wrong thing. Maybe you're passionate about your job, and so you give a lot of time and effort to it and a lot of study. You're passionate about this hobby, and so you, you really seek after it, and you spend your money there, and you work towards it, and you read, and you study so you can grow in this. That's passion. But I encourage you, use some of that same passion to seek the Lord. Oh, but I really want to, and yet I'm not going to open my Bible all week. Don't tell me you're passionate about seeking the Lord. We can use passion in one area and then all of a sudden we want the Lord as a, as a genie in a bottle. Here, come and answer this request I've got. Why aren't you doing that? And he, hold on, hold on. 
You're not seeking me. I'm talking about seeking with determination. It's not an effortless thing. Walking with God diligently, and he promises to reward that. We're created as a passionate being. But I cannot be passionate about God and about the world. Matthew 6, 24 says, No man can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What does that mean? I can't be passionate about God and living for me the rest of the week. But I'm here in church, Pastor. Isn't that good? You're to be commended. I am glad you're in church this morning. But again, that's just not something, some magical thing that church all of a sudden puts us in a standing before God that we can get whatever we want. We've got to seek him with determination. Oh, we see a wonderful example here in Philippians. Look over in chapter 3, verse number 10. Paul tells us his overwhelming goal in life, and he says this in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him. The power of his resurrection, even what? The fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Paul says, I'm seeking Christ. He, give, he gives us a desire for renewal, and then we got to seek it with determination. What about this? Seek him with devotion. Sometimes we lack discipline in our Christian lives and we continue to fall into sin in this way and that way because we have no affection for the things of God. God says to love me, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. The truth of the matter, if we were to break it down, you know the reason why we probably didn't spend as much time in God's word this week? It's not because of a busy schedule or a lack of organization. It's because we don't love it. Oh, I'm not saying we're not busy. We all are. We live in a very busy day. And because of that, sometimes God gets crowded out of our schedule. But we've got to seek him with devotion. A desire, determination to give him first priority. In, in our lives every day. Psalm 34, 10, the psalmist says this, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. Think about that for a moment. Even lions go hungry. We think, oh, they're such a strong beast. Some of them lack. You know what the rest of the verse says? But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. If I truly seek him, God says, you'll find me. So it's not a matter of God's just, where is he? I don't sense him. It's more a matter of, am I really seeking him? Because God says, when you seek me, you're going to find me. Knock, and it shall be open. Seek, ye shall find. The emphasis, though, here, I want us to be careful, especially in a church setting. I've even heard this spoken with someone a few weeks ago and, and in the name of religion, there's some things I've got to do. May I challenge you and to think about this and really it's an encouragement. The emphasis is not about seeking more principles to live by. That's not our emphasis. Let's be honest. Many of us know more principles than we ever care to apply. That's not the emphasis. What do I have to do? To perform. The emphasis is not seeking a principle. The emphasis is seeking a person. The emphasis is not about what I can do. It's who I can be with. Abiding in Christ. Seeking Jesus. Not a performance, but a person. When we sang the song right before, take time to be holy. One of the verses says, take time to be holy the world rushes on, but spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. And by looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct his likeness shall see. You may respond to that, but who's got the time for that? Who wants to be holy? But here's the thing. A spiritual renewal in Christ is about becoming like Christ 
And if there's one word to describe Christ, it's holy. As we become more like him, we'll become more holy. We've got to take time every day to meet with him. Every one of us spending time to be holy. A testimony of our co-worker saying that there's something going on in his life. There's something different and I want it. That there, It looks like he's satisfied. It looks like he's fulfilled in his soul. I, I want that. They said one to another in Luke 24, 30, 32, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way? While he opened to us the scriptures, those were disciples rocking with Jesus after his resurrection and didn't even realize it. They said, but while I was with them, my, my heart just burned. I believe God wants to warm our hearts through fellowship with him. So we have a desire for renewal that comes from God. Then that leads to a seeking for renewal for us. And finally, I'll close with this one quickly. It leads to an abiding in renewal. Abiding in renewal. He gives me the desire to be led by his spirit. That desire causes me to seek the Lord. And if we seek him, we'll find him. And once I find him and I enter into that place of fellowship, I just want to hang out. I just want to remain. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have that desire to seek it, to find him, and not have to close shop and try again tomorrow? Can't I just abide in that? We can abide in fellowship with God. Opening our Bible a couple times a week and then coming to church for an hour and 15 minutes on a Sunday, that's what most people do in life. A small dose of God and live however I want the rest of the week. And we compartmentalize our relationship with Christ. I've got a little bit of time for him. I'm going to set him here. And then I'm going to go about my business. Okay, well, this is his day. Okay, I'll give him an hour, hour and a half. Sometimes I'll even give him, I'll give him another service here. But, but that's over here. And now I'm going to, to live my life. The, the truth of the matter is God can and should be at the center of everything I do. You see, the gift of fellowship with him is more than just a Sunday morning. It's available all the time. Yeah. What have we looked at in John 15? He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, no, except it abide in me. No more can ye except ye abide in me. God says, I want close fellowship with you. I want a daily basis. I want fellowship to be open and clear. You know what I do if I'm not careful on occasion as I pray? I, I nurse bitterness. And it's as if I think I can hide my impure thoughts or my lifestyle from that week. Who am I kidding? As I pray that I can gloss over these things. As if God doesn't already know. As if he does not know my heart and my mind more than I do. And I think I can just get by with it. You know what would be better? If I were to just acknowledge his presence with me at all times. If I'm just going to walk in life open fellowship with Jesus. You know, your struggle this week, that meeting that you're not looking forward to. Jesus says, hey, let me go with you. That conversation you've got to have this week with that family member or that co-worker that just is, is driving you crazy. Jesus said, I, I can be with you. That, that day coming up soon that's a reminder every year of the struggle. Jesus says, hey, abide in me. That, that temptation, undoubtedly, that you know you're going to face, that you dread because you give in so much. Jesus says, I can be here, fellowship with me. I'm not just in a building on Sunday. I'm with you every day. God says, abide with me. Abide in my fellowship. And then last of all, abide in my joy. As I abide with God, he wants me to experience joy. Think about this for a moment. Think about someone you love dearly. When you love someone, what is some of the greatest joy that you have? When that person you love experiences joy. Isn't it neat? When, when someone you love dearly is experiencing joy, you get so excited seeing them. 
May I tell you someone who loves you more than anybody else? That's our Heavenly Father. And you know what he wants you to have? A life of misery. No. He wants you to be so discouraged and defeated and have to live this way. And I've got to give up all my dreams for him. That, that's not what he wants. He wants you to have joy. Abiding, fulfilling, overflowing joy. And there's joy in living for Christ. There's joy in living to accomplish his purpose. First John 1. Verses 3 and 4 say, That which we've seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. There's a first one. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And verse 4 says this, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Why am I giving you this? Why do we share this word? Why do we make so much about Jesus? Why do we preach what he says? God says, I've given you that so that your joy can be full. Not so that your misery is on a high level. When I live for myself, I may experience a high, but very soon after there's a low. When I live for the devil, there is no joy. In fact, I've got to have another drink just to soothe my conscience. I've got to have another fix just to give myself some relaxation and satisfaction and, and then we're off of it again. There's no joy there. Jesus says, I've got something for you. I want to renew a relationship with you every moment, every day. Abide in me. Help, allow me to help you in every decision. Call on me for every need. Trust me in every provision. Follow me in every circumstance. I want to be with you, transforming, renewing, shaping you. Watch this into the image of my son. And yet he leaves the choice to us. We don't have to spend time with him. That's a choice. You see, this morning, salvation... And a child of God, being a Christian, is more than just an escape from hell. It's a transformed, spiritually renewed life now, here on earth. I need it every day, throughout the day. I need his strength to change me. And he can renew a spiritually empty believer if we'll recognize his desire, seek that renewal, and abide with him. Are you renewed spiritually today? I encourage you, take some time. Seek God and experience the renewal of Christ. Let's bow our heads and hearts together in prayer this morning. Thank you for listening.